Hey guys, um, I want to talk about masturbation and watching porn for a second. Um, and most people do not believe, even a lot of Christians do not believe that masturbation and watching porn is even wrong. Um, and I would just say that couldn't be farther from the truth. And let me tell you why. Um, and I used to think this way. I used to think that it was totally normal, whatever. Um, and, um, so let me read to you actually first Corinthians chapter six, um, verse, let's see, 12 through 20. Okay. So all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Okay, so this is so true. There's so many things that we could so do, but not everything is lawful. Um, not only things are helpful to us. Okay, so it says here, foods are for the stomach and stomach is for the foods. Um, and this is what he says. So he goes, now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but it is for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body, okay? So, um, okay, I think this is really interesting how he compares the two things. He compares food that is for the stomach and stomach for the food. He compares that with the Lord being for the body and the body for the Lord. And I think it's interesting how he says the body is not for sexual immorality. Okay, like how crazy is that? Because there's so many people in this world that they only live their life in sexuality. Um, that's how they get buy or that's how that's like their drug you know and especially masturbation and um porn addiction too um so he goes do you not know that your bodies are a member of christ okay he said shall i then take the members of christ and make them members of a prostitute certainly not or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He says, flee from all sexual immorality. And that's even um, masturbation. Every sin that a man does outside the body is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so... Um, basically it is saying that your body is a holy temple and your body is supposed to be for holiness. And let me tell you how, um, masturbation actually corrupts your body. They actually did a study, um, two scientists actually studied, um, two man's brains. One of them was, um, on heroin. He was a heroin addict. And then they, they studied his brain whenever he was on heroin. And then they studied this guy's brain when he would watch porn and when he would masturbate. Um, and they came to find out that both of their brains looked exactly alike. And they came to find out how much damage both of them did to your brain. Which is really interesting that confirms the word of God because the word of God says that sin is sin is sin is sin. Like it's all bad. Like people want to say, oh, at least I'm not a heroin addict. At least I'm not a drug addict. But if you're addicted to porn um, or masturbation, 
that is no different. That is also the same exact sin. Um, and so it totally confirms the word of God. They also, these scientists, and these are secular scientists. This was not like Christian scientists. And they came to find out that people that watched porn um, and masturbated actually do not make very good business, uh, very good um, decisions with life. Um, and so they just really kind of like a drug, like they're like a drug addict that really does not know how to make decisions very well. Um, okay, so I think what's really interesting, the things that God has showed me actually um, through masturbation. So I actually repented of my, like the day, I remember the day that I repented of my sin. I remember I was screaming on the top of my lungs and I was like, I'm done. You know, like I would like when you're like, this was like come to Jesus moment. Like when you're done with your sin, like you're done. Like that, that was one of those moments for me. And I remember I was like, I renounce, you know, I was like, you know, throwing stuff away. And I was like, I'm done with my sexual sin. Okay. Okay. So what's really strange that happened to me, like after I repented from my sin, um, I'm not kidding you. I started getting raped in my sleep every single night. Like it was like, I'm not joking. And I didn't want to talk about this with anybody because, um, people would have thought I was, um, you know, strange, because <laughs> it's kind of a weird subject, you know, um, but this was actually happening to me. This was after I repented of my sin. And so um, what's interesting is I didn't see, actually, um, all this was exposed to me um, after I repented of my sin, like when I was actually in my sin, it was like the devil put um, blinders on me that I could not even see that it was a sin. I could not even see that there was anything wrong or whatever. But what started happening was after I renounced the sin, um, God was revealing to me that I was not having sex with myself. I was actually having sex with a demon. And um, the demon was my spiritual husband is what God revealed to me. And I'm sitting here like, what are you talking about? You know? And God was revealing to me that I had a sexual soul tie with a demon. And um, there's one called incubus and there's one called succubus. One of them is for the male and the other one is for the female. And the Lord kept telling me, um, you know, just different stuff about it. Okay, so um, so I went to my church at the time. The church that I was going to, they did not believe in demons. They didn't believe in any of this stuff. But I didn't know what else to do. I, was, I go to my church and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to repent of this sin. And yeah, I'm literally getting raped in my sleep every night. Didn't know what to do about it, you know? And um, the experience I had, it was actually a horrible experience I had with um, several different churches because um, there's so many churches out there that just don't believe. They were like, demons can't possess you when you're a Christian, all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well then why am I going through this, you know? And nobody could explain to me what I was going through, you know? So there was a period of a month and a half where um, this... Thing was literally raping me in my sleep <laughs> and it was really bad and I was literally praying to God every day I was like God please deliver me from this thing because I don't even know what's going on with me okay so it was a month and a half later okay um I had this dream and I also went into the spiritual realm because like it was like I could control like what was going on in this dream and stuff okay and in this dream um Okay, so this, okay, so I actually dreamed that God was giving me a lot of revelation and he was showing me that this sexual demon that was raping me um, actually came into my family bloodline for generations before me, that there was a generational curse 
that needed to be broken off. And the only way that I could break off this, um, this generational curse and the only way that I could get this demon to get off of me is repentance. That I had to repent of all my sexual sin. I had to repent of masturbation, sex before marriage, um, watching porn, all of it. Anything that's sexual, I had to repent of. And God revealed that to me. And so I didn't experience victory until a month and a half after I repented. And, um, okay, so I saw this lion. Like, it was this huge, scary lion. And I knew that it was a sexual demon. I knew this was the demon that had been raping me in my sleep every night. And, um, so this demon told me, he was like, I own you. And I remember sitting there thinking, okay, I don't feel any different or whatever, but I actually had a second thought. And I remember sitting there thinking, why am I okay with this? This is not okay. Like, why am I okay? Like that this thing owns me. So I called upon the name of the Lord and I said, God, um, like explain this to me what's going on so god actually gave me the ability to escape because i was in this house of bondage um this this lion was keeping me in this house of bondage like my whole life it was like symbolic for my whole life i was stuck in bondage like spiritually um and so anyway so i was able to actually get out the lord actually provided a way for me to escape outside the back door and as soon as I escaped, there was this paradise and it was amazing and it was beautiful. Like I saw the paradise of God. It was so awesome. And I was actually, um, I was actually able to fly. Like I was unable to fly before and I was flying on top of the mountains and I was in the presence of God's glory. Like it was so amazing that I was able to escape from this lion. Well, the Lord told me that I actually had to go back into this house of bondage and I had to go and fight this demon. So I went back and, um, okay, so I needed something hardcore to defeat this lion, okay? And I remember God provided me with nothing more than a small pocket knife, okay? And I remember sitting there thinking, um, I'm going to need something like a shotgun. I'm going to need something way bigger than this thing right here <laughs> to defeat this thing, you know? And, um, but it was like the spirit of God actually rose up inside of me. And like, I had to become smart. Like I had to actually like, I had to go, I had to be brave. So I had to be bold and go up to this lion and then I had to get its main artery. So I went up to this thing and I just like went up to its main artery and I just went, you know, I just went for it. And I just remember sitting there thinking in that moment, oh my gosh, am I actually killing something? <laughs> because I've never killed anything in my life. So I was sitting there thinking, wow, like this is war. Like this is a gruesome war battle, you know? And either this lion was going to kill me or I am going to have to kill this lion. Like there was like no other option that I had other than you kill or be killed, you know? So I killed this thing and there was blood everywhere. It was gushing, whatever. Okay. So I suddenly realized in that moment that, um, all these people that were in all these other rooms, um, actually came out of the rooms of this house of bondage. And um, I suddenly realized not only did I kill this lion for myself, but I also killed this lion for other people too. Um, and so it was really amazing to see, like I really found my calling, my destiny in this dream. And nobody else had saw the um, paradise that I saw. So everyone was just kind of like chilling in the house of bondage. And I was telling people, I was like, why are you 
staying in this house of bondage. I was like, there's freedom out there. And I was telling him, I was like, guys, there's paradise out there. Y'all need to go where the paradise is. Like, did you not know that you guys can fly? Did you not know that like all these things? So I was actually getting everybody on boats and I was gearing them and I was guiding them toward that paradise. And I was like, that's where you guys, you know, need to be at. Okay, so I woke up the next day and I literally felt like a hundred pounds lifted off my shoulders. I felt so great. And on top of that, these raping demon that was raping me in my sleep every night literally went away. Like all these like nightmares went away. Like this stuff went away. Like totally. I was like, wow, I defeated that demon and he's now gone away from me. Um, okay. So my mistake was actually, I ended up, um, I did not actually fill myself with the word of God. Um, and there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, Jesus says, when one demon is being casted out of you, he goes and he finds seven worse demons. And the last state of that man's mind is worse than the first. That's actually kind of what happened to me because a couple months later, not only did this demon come back, but he brought back seven worse demons. And I, the reason why that happened was because I was not in prayer. I was not staying accountable. I didn't have accountability partners. Um, I was not in the word of God, you know, like all these things are essential. Like you need, like, especially if you're trying to get free from addiction, free from pornography, free from sexual addiction, whatever it is, you need to be in prayer. You need accountability. You need to be in the word of God because literally this is a supernatural book and this will literally set you free. Um, and that was my mistake. I didn't do that. So what happened was all of a sudden, I actually had like, like what I thought was bad before it was in my dreams. And this thing was raping me at nighttime whenever I was like sleeping and stuff. Okay, this time, it was literally seven times worse because I started this was happening during the daytime. Okay, now, like a couple months later, I was having all kinds of crazy thoughts that I never had before in my entire life. I was having thoughts about having sex with animals. I was having thoughts about having sex with children. And I was having thoughts about having sex with Jesus Christ. Like, these are thoughts I would never, ever, ever, ever imagine. Ever. Okay? And I was literally sitting there like, Holy Spirit, tell me um, what in the world is going on here. And there was a couple of things that the Holy Spirit was revealing to me. God told me, he said, these are not your thoughts. He said, because it was freaking me out that these, I really thought, I didn't know that the devil can actually mess with your thoughts and mess with your feelings. Um, and so like, he was just really like, I was like really messed up. I was really in a bad place at, in that moment. I was like, God, do not to deliver me from this. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me in that moment um, he kept saying, read the word of God. And in that moment, I told him, I said, um, God, why are you telling me to read the word of God? Because I'm just trying to get these thoughts out of my mind. You know, I'm just literally like, God, I'm, I'm begging you to get these thoughts out of my mind because these are perverted, evil thoughts that I would never think of. And I was like, Holy Spirit, you're gonna have to deliver me. And the Holy Spirit kept telling me, read the word of God, read the word of God. Um, so finally the Holy Spirit was getting frustrated with me and he was like, read the word of God. And I was like, fine, you know? So I just like opened up to like, you know, somewhere in the New Testament. And as I was reading, um, I noticed something, something was cutting inside of me and I noticed that I was actually getting 
freedom. I felt like literally stuff was breaking off of me and I wasn't having these thoughts anymore. And by the time I ended reading that chapter, oh my gosh, I felt so much better. I was literally laughing because I was like, oh, that's why you told me to read the word of God. Because there's a verse that literally says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It literally cuts into your bodies, cuts, cuts off everything that does not belong there. Um, and so, um, so this is really necessary. If you are trying to get clean of all sexual desires, sexual stuff that's going on, you're not crazy, okay? Like, you need to be in the word of God because the devil so badly wants you to believe that you are a pervert when you are actually not. Um, and so um, the only way that's going to clean you up is reading the word of God every day, repenting from your sin, using the strength of God, yielding yourself to God entirely, because you cannot do this in your own strength. You can only do this through the strength of God. Um, and so... So yeah, and then there's another thing that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. He also revealed to me that um, people, okay, so like, you know, obviously when I was going through these crazy thoughts and stuff, I was like, Holy Spirit, like revealed. To, so he revealed to me that because I have knitted my soul with another man, I created a soul tie, a sexual soul tie with him when I had sex with, you know, the different guys I had sex with. And he told me that I had to break off that soul tie. And you can only break off a soul tie with someone through the Holy Spirit. Um, because he revealed to me that some of the guys that I was having sex with, I was, that was an open doorway for these perverted spirits to come on me. Um, because a lot of these guys, like whatever, you know, they were into whatever. Um, and so you never know. I mean, the, the spirit of perversion is rampant and it's literally everywhere. Um, and so God was, so on another level, I actually just learned just from like everything that I've experienced, the stuff that God has exposed to me, um, that how important it is that we're to be pure um, and lovely and, and holy. And that whenever you choose to be in sexual sin, that you are actually choosing an unholy life. Um, and, um, okay. So there was another thing. Um, what was it? I was just going to say, oh, Holy Spirit. What is it? <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember. I was just going to say something really important and I totally forgot. Um, but I know I'll remember it. But yeah, so um, so I just want to pray a blessing over you right now um, that you will be completely free from all sexual sin. Um, and so I just declare in the mighty name of Jesus that all perversion to just come off of you in Jesus' mighty name. I just command that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that if there's any soul tie, that they would be completely broken off. I ask that, Lord God, that if there's any spiritual husbands, spiritual wives, that they would just be broken off right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I just ask that um, you would just come on every person, especially um, that has dealt with sexual sin, that, Lord God, you would just reveal things to them, give them visions, give them dreams about it. And um, I just pray that the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom shall come upon them strongly in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So um, I just remembered. Okay. So um, another thing, okay, is um, the Lord was showing me that sexual sin, because I was in, um, you know, I was masturbating and having sex with guys, you know, before marriage and stuff. He was revealing to me that there was actually a curse that was on me regarding my future husband. 
And because I was in sexual sin, it was preventing me from actually getting married in the future. So all you single people that so desperately want a husband, so desperately want a wife, I would suggest to you, do not be in sexual sin. Do not be creating any soul ties, even emotional soul ties with people. Do not be creating that. Do not be masturbating, none of that, because that will literally break your, um, it will ruin your destiny. It will ruin who you're supposed to marry. Um, and... What's really interesting is after, months after I repented from all my sexual sin, then this is the first time the Lord's ever spoke to me about my husband. Um, and he told me months later when he noticed <laughs> that I was serious about repenting from my sin, um, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going to give you a, um, a gift. He was like, I'm going to give you a gift of a husband and a house and children. And ever since that time, it was in 2017, for the last couple of years, the Holy Spirit has been telling me about my husband and telling me just different stuff about him and that, you know. Um, and so it's just amazing. It's amazing to see that the Holy Spirit has a blessing for me. Um, and, you know, he was revealing to me that he was blessing me with that because I repented from all my sin and stuff. So, um, and also he revealed to me that I needed to disconnect from this spiritual husband who was a demon that I had a soul tie with when I was masturbating, um, which I didn't know that I was having sex with a demon. Um, the Lord was revealing to me that because that demon was there, that masturbation demon was there, it was preventing me because I entered in a covenant with a demon, which is really kind of disgusting. Um, you're preventing your covenant with your actual spouse that you're supposed to be married with. Um, you're preventing that person from coming into your life um, because... Um, First of all, watching porn and masturbation is not, it's, um, sex, um, sexual intimacy that God created is supposed to be with one man and supposed to be with one woman. And it's supposed to be an intimacy thing. And literally porn and masturbation are literally the opposite of um, intimacy. It actually destroys also intimacy in your marriage. And by the way, anybody that is married and they are not getting fulfilled by their husband and their wife, I also want to, I also want to say this too. Um, if you are not getting your sexual needs met by your husband or your wife, okay, and you're choosing to go to por pornography and you're choosing to go to masturbation because that's the only way your needs are going to be fulfilled. I'm telling you right now, you are putting a curse on your marriage and you're actually making the marriage worse. You're not making it better. And um, because that demon is there and that demon, as long as you're there masturbating um, and watching porn, like it's going to destroy your marriage and also your future marriage as well. Um, and so I thought I should say that too. <laughs> um, okay, well, um, that's all I have. And um, may God bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. And may he give you the grace to um, be completely sexually pure in Jesus' name. Amen.